Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to paint a blue tang dory fish. This will be a realistic rendition of this fish using a photo from Unsplash. This is all in real time, no skipped steps. You'll get to see every part of the process. So I hope you'll follow along, grab your paints, and let's get started. Here are the supplies you'll need for this project. You'll need water jars and some paper. I'm using a Fluid 100 block of paper. That means the sides are glued down so that when I apply a lot of water, it won't buckle or warp. I have a spray bottle and two different round brushes, a size two and size eight silver black velvet brush, a pencil and an eraser. And I have five different colors here. I'll link out to all of these in the description below. So to do the sketch, I like to start by just making little marks to indicate how long or how wide the object is going to be. In this case, the blue tang dory fish. So I'm just marking where the little mouth is going to go and then where the tips of the top and the bottom of the fin in the back are going to go. So gently sketching those on, you can see the back of that fin isn't exactly a perfect half moon. It curves a little bit, but it's not a half moon shape. It's more of a squiggly line. And then I've just marked the little opening of the mouth. So once I've done that, I need to measure where the tip or the point of this triangular yellow shape in the tail is going to go. And I can see that it's about a third of the length of the fish, maybe a little less. So I've marked where the shape of the tail goes and then drawing that on and adding the top and bottom blue shapes connecting that fin. Then for the underside, I have to do just a swooping motion with my pencil. Sometimes these organic circular shapes can be the most difficult to draw perfectly. In fact, once I drew the fin on, I realized I needed to relocate the mouth a little bit. So I'm redrawing that on a little more accurately, a little smaller, and then connecting that circular shape for the bottom of the fish. If it's not a perfect line, don't worry. You can always erase it. It's easier to erase with pencil than to try to fix it with your paint later. So make sure that your drawing is as accurate as possible and that you have enough information that you need before you start painting. And then I'm just adding on that bottom fin. So there's the bottom shape. Now for the top, it's really just a mirror image of the bottom. The front of the head of the fish is slightly more sloping, but really you just need to be able to draw an upside down half circle to complete the shape of a fish. Fortunately, it's not the most complex shape to draw. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you have a little bit of bumpiness, that's okay. You can always smooth it out, erase it, and start over as needed. And there's the silhouette of our fish. So now I just need to add some of the details inside of the fish. I'm going to go ahead and draw the gill. And then once I'm happy with the placement of that little marking, I can locate where this little front fin goes. I want to be very light with my drawing for the portion that's yellow since I don't necessarily want the pencil mark to show up underneath the paint. And then there's a very strong black marking on the back of the fish. It comes from the point of that little fin all the way down below the back fin. And then it swoops up just above the front fin. And then comes forward and connects to the eye. So I'm going to start drawing the eye on next so that I can make that connection in those shapes. The eye is just a circle. I'm going to indicate where the highlights are on the eye. And then draw this swooping line almost to the top of the fish, but not quite. I want to leave room for that light blue line that comes across the very top. And then that, connecting that shape almost like a mountain. The black shape comes all the way back, running parallel to the top fin and touches the back fin. And then you see an elongated little oval shape inside of that black shape. So I'm going to make sure that I draw that accurately as well. Again, you just need enough information so that you can start painting confidently. We don't need to draw anything for the background. We're going to do the background entirely with paint. I'm just going to straighten out the shape of the mouth a little bit. 
and for the most part, pretty happy with our drawing. So once you've got your drawing down, make sure that you're organized and you have all of your paint wet and ready to go. So I like to spray it with my spray bottle to get the paint activated and flowing. And now I've dipped my silver black velvet size eight round brush in the clean water and I'm running the water all over the background with my brush, just painting around the fish for now. So we are going to start with the background and we're going to try to use the colors that we've chosen to create that blurry look, almost like a photograph that's blurred out. And the colors I've chosen are going to closely mirror what, what I see in the photograph. So I chose Moon Glow for the background because I love how this color looks when it is activated by water. It's actually a combination of three different pigments. One is kind of a green or teal color. There's gray and there's a red color mixed in with this combination color. And so it's a very complex color and does amazing things with the water. So we're going to start with that. Once you have the entire background glossy wet and you've carefully painted with the water around the fish, you can start adding some color. You may need to add an extra layer of water as certain areas start to dry. Since you're taking your time and painting around the fish, it might dry a little quicker. So now I'm grabbing that moon glow, mixing it up on my palette first just to test how dense the paint is and to test the value. And you can see because we pre-wet the paper, the paint is just exploding and spreading out and softening really nicely. Definitely, if you want to get the same results that you see here, you'll want to use 100% cotton watercolor paper. And I'm using a cold press paper which has a little more texture and tooth to it. And it works really well for these wet and wet techniques. So I'm just applying that moon glow all over in blotches in the background. Rather mirroring what I see in my reference photo, but of course it's not going to be exact. And you'll want to work quickly so that you can apply other colors while the paper is still wet too. I'm applying a little bit of Moon Glow in a lighter value in certain areas too. You're already beginning to see the separation of colors in that Moon Glow paint. You can see a little bit of the hints of teal and gray coming through. Here at the bottom, there's a very strong dark shape below the fish, so I'm starting to add that in. Painting the shapes that I see in the reference photo, just using quick swiping motions of my brush. You can even blot with the belly side of the brush. And I'm rinsing my brush and dabbing on the paper towel to control the water, and then softening that edge that formed a little bit of a hard edge since the paper was beginning to dry. So if your paper does dry too fast, you can always manually go back and soften the edges. Now this is phthalo blue. It's a cool blue, which means it has a little bit more green or yellow in it. And this is what I'm using to supplement the colors in the background. You can use any cool blue for this. If you have turquoise blue, that would be a great substitute. So I'm just painting that all the way up to the edge of the fish and using water to pull some of the moon glow around and push and pull the paint. While the paper is still wet, you can push and pull the paint around to some extent without worrying about messing up any layers beneath. And I'm really loving the combination of that phthalo blue with the moon glow. I think the two colors complement each other well. Now what I'm doing is I'm just dipping my t the tip of my brush in water and dropping little droplets of water here and there on the paper while it's still wet. And this is going to form blooms. So a bloom occurs when the water separates the paint on the paper and starts to push the pigment outward. And this effect really only works if your paint is still slightly wet and just beginning to dry. So you can see those blooms forming and looking really lovely. I love this effect for water or for snow or for backgrounds that are supposed to look blurry because it's a really natural way to create these really amazing effects that only watercolor can do. And it doesn't require much effort either. That's the best part. All right, next we're going to move on to the fish and I'm mixing up some ultramarine blue. This is a warmer blue, which means it has more red in it. 
And we're going to start with this really light value and just paint it on the very top of the fish. So I'm using the tip of my brush with this really nice light watered down value, painting it all along the top ridge of the fish. And I'm mixing in some more pigment to make the color richer and more intense. And then turning my brush so that the tip of the brush is facing the bottom side of the fish. And then using a broader brush stroke, using more of the belly of the brush to create the underside. Still using ultramarine. And then painting that right up to that black spot. And almost to the edge of the fish. It's not super important to go to the edge since that's going to be a dark color later. And then using more watered down paint inside of the face of the fish. Painting around the eye and leaving a light highlight on the top of the snout or the mouth of the fish. Painting a very light blue even inside of that little fin. And so you see a couple of different values already on, on our fish. A lighter value on the top and a darker value at the bottom. And this is starting to indicate a light source. Now I'm dipping back into that phthalo blue and painting this little tiny bottom fin and using that color all across the larger back fin and across the top fin as well. And then painting that color very carefully above the tail fin. And inside of this black shape, there's a highlight that is a bright blue. So I'm using this color for that area and pulling that color all the way up to the eye. If you want to switch to a smaller brush for these details, this would be a good time to do that. You can actually go really small with a size eight round brush too. And painting inside of the eye with that blue, just avoiding the highlights. And then painting the front and the inside of the fin. I'm taking some more phthalo blue and adding a dark layer, a darker wash along the underside of the belly of the fish. And then softening that out with a little more watered down paint all the way up to the edge. So that cool blue is helping balance out the warmer blue. When you combine the two, you get a really good balance. I'm filling in that light blue oval shape. And there's the first wash on our dory fish. I'm rinsing my brush out. And the next step is to paint the yellow fins. So I'm taking my smaller brush now. This is my size two silver black velvet brush. And I'm taking a little bit of that lemon yellow and painting this very front fin. To maintain the brilliance of your color, make sure that you have a clean brush and that you're not mixing it with any of the other colors. Taking that same color for the tail fin. Lemon yellow is actually what you would consider a cool yellow. And it's so it's not warm as in having more red or orange in it. So to apply the darker shadow, which is a more warm yellow, I'm using my yellow ochre and painting that in wet and wet on the tail fin. By using the wet and wet technique for this, the color will spread out and blend much more naturally than if you're trying to apply a subsequent layer and soften every edge manually. That can be actually a bit more work. Now the thing that's really going to make our fish look realistic is going to be applying the darkest values. So next I'm dipping into my indigo color. This is my dark blue and I'm painting the lips of the fish and that dark gill. And 
And then I'm going to fill in every little dark area that I see in my reference photo using indigo. So we are really kind of drawing with the paint again. We're using the tip of that round brush to draw. I'm going to switch back to my smaller brush. That larger one was a little bit unwieldy. <laughs> and we're going to use this for all these little details. So like I said, we're using the brush and the paint now to continue drawing the details. The drawing is not finished with the sketch. You're still drawing with paint. So I'm just reaffirming my drawing with the paint on the mouth and the lower fins, adding shadow shapes where I see dark values in my reference photo. And on this fin, I do see a dark blue just underneath the yellow, but it's not quite as black as indigo. So I'm dipping back into my ultramarine and applying that dark blue just below the yellow. I'm going to use that same color that's still on my brush to fill in the eye. And grabbing a little bit more indigo to go darker. And now carefully painting the details of the eye. For a circular eye like this, I like to start by drawing around it again to reaffirm the circular shape and then paint around the highlights very carefully. I fill in the darkest values first, since this helps me make better judgments about the other values. And then from there, I'm gonna paint the little tiny spots or speckles on the face of the fish. So I'm holding my brush pretty much upright and just adding those tiny little dots. You'll want to paint very lightly and gingerly if you're using this technique. If you press too hard, you're gonna to get too broad of a brush stroke. And these are incredibly tiny details, so just use the very tip of your brush. Make sure you have enough juicy paint on there, but that there isn't much water on your brush or you will end up with paint and water that just washes out all these details. So really you just wanna have a lot of pigment on your brush that's not to water down. Going even finer with those dots towards the top of the head. They're so tiny. And then continuing to paint the dark shape above the eye. Work slowly and carefully, constantly compare what you're painting to the reference photo and follow along as best you can. Of course, I love to paint realistically. It's one of my favorite things to do. But if you're feeling stressed by all these details, you can always simplify with broader brush strokes and less details. You'll still get a great looking fish if you get the drawing right and if you get the color and value right. Details are just icing on the cake. So for this dark black shape inside the body of the fish, I'm just making sure I'm using the tip of my brush and pulling it along the edge of my pencil mark, trying to stay true to the drawing I put down. And if you mess up a little bit, you can just smooth out that edge with the paint. I'm switching to my slightly larger brush now to continue filling in that shape so that I can work a little bit quicker. The size eight brush holds a lot more paint than that size two brush, so it's a little bit easier to just do broader brush strokes and fill in large sections. Still have to slow down and paint carefully where you're working around details, but overall I like to work fast, so my size eight brush is my best friend. All right, I'm painting that black streak along the top of the fish that touches the top fin connecting that shape to the bottom part of black and painting quickly so that my paint doesn't form any hard edges or dry too quick. You want it to all soften together and blend together while the paint is wet for the most natural look. So really here we're just coloring in the darkest shapes using thick juicy paint, not a lot of water. I only need enough water to get the paint flowing.
I love using tube paints because the colors are incredibly rich and vibrant. They reactivate really well. So unlike oil paints or acrylics, which have to be thrown out when they dry out on your palette, watercolors can stay on there for many months even, and they last such a long time and reactivate really nicely. All right, so I'm painting those black streaks on the top and bottom of the tail fin and applying a black stripe showing the disconnect between the fin and the body. And on the underside of that lower fin, painting it in black, filling it all in, a little bit wider stripe running in parallel motion. And then I'm creating with the tip of my brush a little bit of parallel brush strokes all along there to indicate the fin. And suddenly it looks so much more realistic. We just need to add some more small parallel lines on the top fin, mirroring the bottom fin. This fish is so lovely and symmetrical. So I'm just filling in the black along the top and adding those same parallel lines to the top fin. Rinsing my brush and then adding a very dark shadow along the top. That was a little too dark, so I'm rinsing and lifting some of that back out just so it's not too dark. And watercolor does dry lighter, so you may notice that the body gets a little bit light as it starts to dry, so you can always apply another layer over the top once that first wash is dry, just to darken up your shadows. Gonna do the same thing with that little oval shape, just add a shadow in a darker value. You'll notice there are really two values within that shape, a medium value and a light highlight on the top. I'm rinsing my brush, and now this is an optional last step. I have a little bit of white gouache on my palette, and I'm just adding some water to reactivate the gouache. And I want to sort of imitate those little speckles that I see in the reference photo where there's stuff in the water or little bubbles perhaps. So I'm using the tip of my round brush to paint some little bubbles in the water. And I think this is helping lend a more organic, realistic look to the painting, helping the fish feel like it belongs in the environment it's in. And what's really going to help it feel connected to the background is adding little bubbles over the top of the fish. Make sure you only add these to areas that are already completely dry. You can also use white acrylic paint or white gel pens for little details like this. And be sparing with such details, with gouache especially. It has a different look to it than transparent watercolor. And unlike transparent watercolor, which dries lighter, gouache will actually dry a little bit darker. So if you want your purest white possible, you may have to mix up a really thick, juicy combination with your water and test it first to make sure it's not going to dry too dark. You can see mine's already looking a lot darker than when I first applied it. So I'm just adding them in a pleasing arrangement. It doesn't have to be exactly like the photo. Just try to create a design that you're happy with. Couple more on the left side, just above the mouth. One more over the top of the fish. Make sure you're standing back and looking at your overall design. Don't add anything if you feel like it might actually detract from the final result. Look at your overall shapes and make sure that it's pleasing. Couple more little bubbles here and there. And there is our finished blue tang dory fish. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to paint. Tag me on Instagram if you decide to try this project and I would love to see it. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.